Hi everybody, this is Ketar from INSEAD and I'm delighted to be joined today by David Navarro. David is based in Switzerland. He is Professor of Health at the Imperial College in London and is also one of the special envoy of the World Health Organization on COVID-19. Nice to see you, David. Thanks for joining Hello. us. Thank you. So my first question to you, David, is um, what does your role as a special envoy of the World Health Organization entail? Can you tell us what that looks like? Thank you. The World Health Organization is maintaining a continuous uh, analysis and also series of uh, advice and guidance on the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the Director General last month invited me and five other people to become special envoys for the work on COVID-19. My job is to amplify the guidance provided by the WHO, to interpret that guidance to governments and to other actors in the response, to accompany them as they implement that guidance and to help them with challenging choices, and at the same time to feed back to WHO as this work goes ahead. My area of coverage is Europe and North America. Thank you very much, David. That's uh, very specific. And thank you again for giving us your, some of your time, given that that's a very busy role. From that viewpoint, could you please help us um, better understand what is the key role that businesses can play in this time of crisis? So thank you. Businesses are really important uh, in this crisis. And here, is, here are the reasons. When a COVID outbreak starts, it's usually just with one or two people being ill, but very quickly, because it's such a transmissible disease, a lot more people can become infected. And within two weeks, you can have a major, what I call explosive outbreak. And we've seen these in Northern Italy or parts of Iran. Uh, these explosive outbreaks, can be contained, but that requires action by people supported by the health system. Now, if people are going to be expected to act, they need to be guided and supported. And businesses have an amazing capacity through their brands and their links with customers to connect with people and to support them as they're forming solidarity groups in their communities, to themselves get better able to deal with COVID. Businesses can also help to ensure that their employees are ambassadors for the COVID response. And businesses have a key role to play in society as there are shifts in the way in which we live as a result of major movement restrictions, sometimes called lockdowns, which are necessary when outbreaks become very advanced. So business does have an important role. And I would like to encourage all business leaders everywhere to imagine how they can contribute, not just as part of their own core businesses, but also as part of their contract with society. I'm very happy to share my views on this uh, in follow-up. And also, I produce narratives at regular intervals, uh, which I can make available. Thank you very much, David. And as, uh, as uh, a large part of the response is also very local, uh, the role of local businesses, uh, which are typically smaller and also much more vulnerable than large corporations, is also key. Any specific role or advice that you would give to these you know, more localized businesses? Unfortunately, the COVID uh, pandemic is going to have a very a dampening effect on business activity in many areas of the world for a period of time. And so my first advice always is do what you can to try to limit the expansion of small outbreaks into big outbreaks, because it's when they become big that drastic action has to be taken, which can in turn curtail business activity. Please see yourselves as part of the response. Uh, small businesses do connect very well with people and people rely on them. And so I do encourage all small businesses to recognize the important role they play. Here's some examples. If you're a small retailer, please give priority to the needs of health workers so that they can get the supplies they require. If you are a, 
a service provider, if you're particularly offering transport or other services, please again prioritize the needs of health personnel and others who are at the center of the response. See yourselves as very much part of ensuring that priority activity can be maintained. Now, there are three groups of businesses that I look at. One is large businesses that typically can uh, cope with some uncertainty and have their staff working from home and the like. The second are small businesses who are in real difficulty, but perhaps the most important are the individual entrepreneurs or those who are perhaps running a, a business with their families, like family farmers. Some of these are going to be in extreme difficulty. So a big part of our work with businesses has to be to recognize that life needs viable functioning businesses, life needs entrepreneurs, and all of us need to not only depend on businesses, but also do what we can to keep businesses in a flourishing state in these very difficult times. I'm very pleased that some of the governments in places where there's been major reduction in business activity are thinking very hard about stimulus packages, but that's okay when you've got a government with some ready cash available uh, in the finance ministry. Uh, what I think we need to be aware of is that in countries where there's not that capacity and where there's not insurance, uh, small businesses and individual entrepreneurs are gonna face a very tough time and we all need to rally around and support them. Thank you very much, David. My, my final question would be for us regular also citizens. Any advice for those of us who want to help um, or some of us being working remotely or confined but still want to contribute and to help? What are the key advice you would, you would give to people like, like you and like others? Thank you, Katal. If I look at how countries in Southeast Asia have successfully got on top of outbreaks and are preventing new outbreaks from forming, the way they do that is through engaging with their communities and building on the community organization patterns that exist. Sometimes it's said that success that's been reported from Wuhan in China or from South Korea or from Singapore is because of strong government action, but it's not. It's because of partnership between governments and their communities that's really proved to be so important. Now, in some parts of the world, communities are strong. In other parts of the world, communities are still having to get strong. And so every citizen, uh, especially those who are now working from home, can really do well to invest time, not only in thinking about how they can keep themselves and their families safe, so, and that's not always straightforward, they can always be thinking, also be thinking about what they can do with their communities. Let's say you live in an apartment block. Make certain that you are forming groups inside your apartment so that you can connect by WhatsApp or, or other, other means, or simply just to my telephone, leaving post-it notes around the apartment, just showing who's available if anybody needs help. Make sure that you know where there are older people or disabled people who need support so they're not going to be on their own and form a rotor so that if they are confined to their homes that you can keep an eye on them. Make sure that those who need support to go out and get exercise if they are enabled to go out for that purpose and in most of the current lockdowns that is possible. Make sure that they can get support when they get out. Form solidarity groups in your community Make sure you're kept up to date with information from authorities like the World Health Organization or your government. But it's that community solidarity that's going to be key. This virus doesn't move around on its own. It moves around inside people. And people are key both to understanding the outbreak and also to ensuring we have a response and keeping ourselves strong and secure during that response so that when we come out of the outbreak, we're a stronger society than we, than we were. David, thank you very much for your advice. Very valuable. Thank you for your work. Congratulations on your appointment. And we all, you know, rooting for you and for other uh, health workers um, helping us in this difficult situation. Thank you for prioritizing the health workers. They really are going, they're already the heroes of the hour and they're going to be the heroes of the outbreaks and they will be the heroes who will bring this pandemic uh, to a close. Thank you.